do not try this at home. Uh, I talked with a number of former sailors about what the right way is to use these things before I attempted it. Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Uh, today, we're going to do a bit of a science experiment with the OBA canisters. Uh, we know that these tend to do bad things if they get wet, uh, or especially if they get oily. I've uh, heard it said that they can explode if they get covered in oil. Oh. So we're going to try and render them inert so we can use them safely for displays on the battleship. Today, I'm going to try on an OBA, or an oxygen breathing apparatus, which is a uh, U.S. Navy firefighting rebreather, which is no longer in use, but it would have replaced the Momsen lung on this ship um, probably by the Vietnam War. This uses an oxygen canister, which is supposed to last about an hour. This canister is a um, potassium superoxide. It heats up, and that's scrubbing air I've exhaled, and it's making new oxygen. Also uses a sodium chlorine candle to set off the uh, chemical reaction inside of this. Because there's a chemical reaction, this is supposed to heat up. Uh, Here's your canister, this side towards yourself, just like the Claymore mine. It's got handy instructions on the front. There's the cap, and that seal needs to be broken for this to start, but it will be punctured when I insert it into the uh, vest here. Alright, so the first component of this I feel like we need to talk about is the speaker itself. Oh, you can hear me. Maybe you could hear me without the speaker on, it's kind of muffled. When you're using this, the ship is full of smoke, you're, you're probably with your damage control repair party, you're definitely not going to be alive. So communicating with other people is important, and visual beads just aren't going to work well. So it's got this little enunciator pad, oh, it's just a battery pad, it just uses a 9 volt battery. And it allows me to talk so you can hear. So you notice there are two hoses. This hose right here is for air coming into the mast. And this hose is air going out. When I squeeze it, I can't draw air. And when I squeeze this one, the mast fills up with air. That's how I can tell that. You'll also notice that there are these lungs on each side that you might see inflating. Because the air is scrubbed and produced via a chemical reaction inside the canister, it comes out extremely hot. And I can feel that canister heating up against my chest right now, which is why the inside is just so heavily padded. So these lungs are actually using some method to cool the air, and it's quite cool as it comes into the mask, which is great, because if I'm using this, I'm in the middle of a fire, uh, Power is probably out, but the ship is not going to be cool. So getting a little bit of cool air instead of 200 degree air is real great. Now the instruction said that the mass could fill with a non-harmful smoke when I first set off the canister. I'm happy to say that didn't happen. Uh, in fact, I wasn't even sure that the canister was working properly at first. I had no idea. Uh, obviously, I never never served in the Navy, uh, and if I had served in the Navy, I wouldn't have been around when these were issued, I believe, in 2001 when I was 11 years old. They started to replace these OBAs with the SCBAs, which are more common nowadays. You'll also see on here a timer. It goes up for an hour. That's how long the canister is supposed to last. 
You only turn the timer to 45 minutes, though, and this is going to set off a little alarm bell. That'll uh, let you know that the air is running out. At that point, you've got 15 minutes to get out of that space. If you've got presence of mind, you might dial that on for another 15 minutes after it's out. Uh, if not, 15 minutes is more than enough time, should be more than enough time to escape the boat or the area that you're in that's in danger. So you can drop the canister and insert a new one. Let's see. Here you can see the back standing. So we have a side here as well with the obstacle, of course. I don't really feel a lot of weight on my shoulders or back. It's more at the bottom here where this bar is pressing into my gut. Can I strap that pretty well? You'll notice the headpiece is also strapped on with adjustable straps all over. I'm getting very good suction all the way around my face. I'm not worried about smoke from the outside coming in here. So, we're here in Barrage Control Central. I still have 20 minutes on my timer. And I'm going to see how easy it is to move through the ship wearing this. So I'm going to uh, leave Damage Control Central and head down Broadway to one of the repair lockers, see if I can find a helmet and maybe some tools or something, and then I'm going to continue down the rest of the way Broadway, and we'll see how easy it is, how quick I can maneuver in this. Let's take a ball for some shorting and timbers. So why is all a problem? Because I can't see where my feet are and which one I'm on. With this thing out in front of me, I just can't look down. I've been wearing this now for about 30, 35 minutes. It's really starting to heat up. I can, I can really feel it warming my, my chest. So real happy for the cool air, thanks to these inflating lungs. Uh, 
So you can see the inside. This had a cap on it and a foil cover, which was punctured when this was inserted into the mask. And yeah, that is that is quite hot when you touch it to bare skin. Now, to kind of set up, I'm just breathing through the open hole at the bottom. Remember, do not try this at home. Uh, I talked with a number of former sailors about what the right way is to use these things before I attempted it. Uh, and I verified that the thing worked before I put it on. And uh, these chemicals are pretty safe inside the canister, as long as the canister is kept dry and away from oil. Uh, and so they're stored in special metal bins elevated off the deck in various places around the ship. And we would like to put some of these back out. We found a box of them in a repair locker uh, that were still completely live, which is why we uh, decided to burn them off uh, before we put them on display. So the first step was to actually put them in an OBA, it punctures the top and it burns up a lot of the chemicals inside. The next step once that is done is to put it in water and the water will render what's inside of this more or less inert. Um, on board ships, when they use them, they would go out into international waters and then throw them over the side. Uh, there is a chemical reaction happening there, so you don't want to just throw it into a river and pollute the whole area. We'll be disposing of our wastewater uh, in a specific way, but uh, just wanted to show you what happens when one of these that's already spent gets dropped in water. So we've already done this uh, prior to shooting this video. Here's one that hasn't gone in the water. Here's one that was in the water for an hour. Uh, so that shows you that the chemicals in there are pretty caustic. The uh, brass cap comes out black. Uh, there is a chemical reaction going in there, which is why I'm wearing the, the rubber gloves. These also heat up just like when you're using them. The, the chemical reaction is happening. And uh, let's throw a second one in there just for fun. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching the video today. You can support the museum uh, by donating and by uh, liking, sharing, and subscribing our videos here on the YouTube channel. Also, uh, if you have any questions or comments, check out the comment section down below. We try to get back to people pretty quickly. Thanks for watching our science experiment today, and I'll see you next time.